So the other day I put up a poll asking which of these four videos should I do first and to my surprise a vast majority voted for Dinosaur King. For those who don't know, Dinosaur King is a kids TV series based on an arcade game from Sega. From what I know, both the arcade game and the series never went anywhere and was mostly considered as a discount version of Pokemon, which it kinda is if I'm gonna be honest. I'm not sure what the plot is for the game, but for the series, what happens is three kids, known as the D-Team, travel around the world collecting these dinosaur cards and battling the villains, aka the Alpha Gang, to get them. Each card is also tied to one of six elements, and each element tends to have different families of dinosaurs in it. Spinosaurs and various small sauropods go in the water element, while ceratopsians are in the lightning element. The wind element is one of the most diverse elements, having allosaurs, abelisaurs, megalosaurs, metrocanthosaurs, and dromaeosaurs. The fire element shares quite a few animals of those clades with the wind element, but the fire element contains larger members of those families alongside tyrannosaurs and carcrodontosaurs. The grass element has primarily hadrosaurs and iguanodonts, but also have numerous sauropods and pterosaurs, and the earth element is made up of ankylosaurs and stegosaurs. There's also another element, simply known as Secret, but this doesn't have any pattern when it comes to its dinosaurs, mainly just being random stuff. I recommend checking out the Dinosaur King fandom page if you want to learn more about this. And there's these crazy things called move cards that basically give dinosaurs the ability to do all this crazy stuff. Anyway, I watched the series a bit when I was younger, and really I enjoyed it to the point it's a wonder how the DVDs I have of it didn't wear out. In this video, I'll be revisiting the first five episodes, analysing the dinosaur designs from them, and pointing out some inaccuracies here and there in the episodes. There's eight dinosaurs to go over, and each episode is about 20 minutes long, so this will be a two-part series, and I'll be using still images to avoid getting a copyright claim. And just before I get started, I do just want to address a couple of things. First off for this video, this video by Dinop the Dino will be a source used for the main six dinosaurs of the series, though I will also make my own nitpicks here and there and I'll be going off of what I've learnt from Red Raptor Writes' videos, and any sources I read through while writing the script will be listed in the description. Another thing of note is some basic but important stuff that applies for all dinosaurs in this series. The first being pronated wrists. Studies have found that 1. Dinosaurs couldn't rotate their wrists, and two, they didn't sit in this position, but in what's known as a neutral or clapping position. Another inaccuracy that applies to Dinosaur King is shrink wrapping. Shrink wrapping is when they reconstruct the animal with the bare minimum of flesh, fat and muscle it would have needed or had in reality to function. However, animals don't have this bare minimum coating and do tend to be more fleshed out, so dinosaurs were most likely fairly chunky animals, but as we'll see with some monstrosities later on, shrink wrapping is pretty prominent throughout this series. And the final one is visible fenestrae, which are those holes in the skull of these animals. You can see these holes very clearly on Dinosaur King's models, when in reality these wouldn't be visible at all, being hidden behind the dinosaur's flesh and skin. This also could kind of be lumped in with the shrink wrapping category when you think about it. Anyway, there might be some other things I'm missing, but I believe I've covered the basics that will be visible throughout the entire series. I also won't be taking these into account when ranking them, since this is something that applies to all of them, not just one individual dinosaur. I'm mainly looking for more major mistakes that apply to the animal itself, not something that can be found across all of them, unless they are related species. Now on to the main stars of the series. The first one we see in the show is Triceratops, which is a main dinosaur of the series, being named Chomp by Max Taylor, one of the main human characters of the series. 
there's two species of Triceratops, T. horridus and T. prorosus. According to Dinop's video, Chomp is a Triceratops horridus, which is the larger of the two subspecies. Other differences include its horns being more upturned and the nasal horn being smaller than the one on T. prorosus. As Dinop pointed out, Chomp's feet are too elephant-like and the tail might be too long. However, one thing he missed was the frill. The frill wouldn't have these bony spikes when the Triceratops is an adult. However, if we're talking about infants, that's a different story since they have these lumps and bumps around the edge of their frill. However, in Dinosaur King, this is switched around, so Chomp has no bumps on his smaller form, whilst in the bigger form he has them. So they were onto something here, but we're still off by a bit. Also, when looking at the teeth, they look like human molars, which are the teeth at the back of your mouth. In reality, Triceratops teeth should look like this. They're designed more so for slicing and cutting up thick vegetation, and would have been in organized rows of three or four, like with shark teeth where when the old one falls out, it's quickly replaced by the one behind it, and the cycle repeats for that one after a while. Another flaw is the skin of Chomp in the series. You see, Triceratops had these spiky looking bits presumably all over its body. There's also been large holes found in the skin, which some people believe is evidence for quill-like structures in Triceratops. There's a very distant relative of Triceratops that people hold up as another piece of evidence for Triceratops having quills, though again, it's a distant relative. Unless we find better evidence in the future, Triceratops most likely didn't have quills and can be designed without them for now. But this does still mean Chomp should have the little spiky nipple-like structures on his body. And my final negative criticism is the horns. You might think they're a little big when compared to fossils, however according to fossilguy.com what the fossilized skulls have is only the bone core of the horns. In reality, these would have had a keratin sheath that would have made them larger. However, we don't know exactly how much would have been keratin and how much would have been the bone core, so Dinosaur King's Triceratops might have accurate or inaccurate horns. Personally, I reckon they might be a little too big now that I think about it. In terms of positives, Triceratops has a correct beak alongside the right shaped horns and frill according to Dinop. And for me, I'd say the main positive I have is that the legs seem to be placed correctly. Some reconstructions show Triceratops with this weird sprawled leg posture, where in reality that wasn't the case, and they were more placed under the body, like with all other dinosaurs though they were a little bowed out at the elbows. Overall, I'd say the Triceratops and Dinosaur King is alright. On the tier list I'm doing for this video, I'll give Triceratops a solid good, on a ranking from aged like milk to greatest thing since getting a girlfriend. The next dinosaur that appears is Tyrannosaurus, which is named Terry and is used by the main villains of Season 1, aka the Alpha Gang. First off, as I'll also point out with the next dinosaur I'm going over, there's this weird row of spikes down Terry's spine. From what I know, it most likely didn't have these, and as pointed out by Dinop, the brow ridges are too large and just completely wrong. Also, the teeth are exposed, when in reality they would have been covered in these thick lips. Some of you might disagree and point to crocodiles and modern day dinosaurs, aka the birds, However, this is like the debate for electric vehicles. They seem promising at first, but when you look into it, the idea quickly falls apart. Yes, it seems promising at face value, since crocodilians and dinosaurs share the same family of ancestors, but crocodilians have adapted for a more aquatic lifestyle where they don't need lips, and birds, for modern dinosaurs, have evolved toothless beaks, meaning no teeth. The point in lips for animals is to hydrate teeth and stop them being exposed to the elements, but birds lost their teeth, meaning they don't need lips to hydrate them, and crocodiles don't need them because they live in water, meaning their teeth are constantly hydrated. So in other words, all dinosaurs in this show should have lips, 
and I should have included this in the section going over recurring themes in each dinosaur design. And also, in his smaller form, he's very chunky, like built like a brick house chunky, like prehistoric planets adult Tyrannosaurus chunky, like I want to make a comparison to a disgusting person on YouTube chunky. Why don't you stop worrying about ICBMs and stop eating LCMs, you fat fuck? As you may have guessed from me making that comparison with Prehistoric Planet, Terry in his smaller form should be a lot slimmer and lightly built. He shouldn't look like if you hit him with an iron bar on the head, it would fold around him like that scene in the Black Adam trailer. Also, his posture is upright, like he's a bloody kangaroo, when his spine should be parallel with the ground. Older paleo art shows bipedal dinosaurs like this, and I kinda like that style, but that isn't how they would have looked like in reality. Terry also has fingers of equal length, when in reality one was longer than the other. This is also another thing that applies to all carnivores in this show. Anyway, in terms of positives, when it comes to the adult form, Terry is a fairly heavily built Tyrannosaurus, even with shrink wrapping. Tyrannosaurus was a very robust animal, and this absolute chonk got chonkier when they found Gastralia, better known as belly ribs, which show the true depth of the animal's chest cavity, therefore giving a better picture of the animal's robustness. This does mean, however, that Terry's belly should be closer to the ground. Another positive is that the teeth seem to be flat and D-shaped, which is what Tyrannosaurus had in reality. Unlike a dinosaur I'll cover later, Tyrannosaurus teeth were designed for gripping prey and crushing bone. Overall, I'd actually say that it's a good tier dinosaur. The final criticism I have is these keratin structures on the face, for if I remember correctly, Prehistoric Planet and Kingdom's designs have some keratin type stuff on their faces, just not like this. Next up is Carnotaurus, which is named Ace by Rex Owen, another main character of the series. First off are the arms, which are too big. The arms on Carnotaurus were very tiny and weren't really usable, unless you believe the idea Prehistoric Planet put forward as a use for them. Like I've heard tons of people say online, if you joke about Tyrannosaurus having small arms, then you are obviously unoriginal and should take a look at Carnotaurus. This problem of the arms being too big also becomes a lot more observable when you look at the small dinosaur form of Ace, which might as well be these cursed images at this point. And the vertebrae of Carnotaurus were designed to be stiff and pack on a lot of muscle to power the legs in order to make Carnotaurus a very fast dinosaur, meaning the whole body should be a lot stiffer and straight than what's shown. I remember coming across one video placing Carnotaurus at a speed of 70 kilometers an hour, which I think might have been from a video from the YouTube channel MindQ. However, according to the website dinopit.com, Carnotaurus could only achieve a speed of 49.8 kilometers an hour. One thing that should be noted though, is that speed doesn't equal agility, with Carnotaurus being believed to have been built for running in a straight line and not making sharp turns. If I continue this as a series, we'll probably talk a bit more about this when talking about either the Utah Raptor or Suchomimus episode, where Ace gets to show off his speed. One other inaccuracy I noticed, though I can't remember where I heard it, so take it with a grain of salt, is the osteoderms, which are those little bony bits in the skin. From what I know, these wouldn't have been in organised rows, but randomly scattered all over the body. Finally, the horns are probably too coned shape, when in reality they were more flattened, and what's the deal with this row of spikes down his spine? And Ace also has that kangaroo posture going on like Terry does. Honestly, since they both have that posture and longer arms than they should, I wouldn't be surprised if they did just use a kangaroo as a base for their smaller forms. Now for positives. The skull is the right shape, and I believe the same could be said for the legs and the entire body, though maybe the legs should be a little longer. Any other positives I have will be saved for when I go over the episodes, just like with the other dinosaurs. Overall, 
I'd say Carnotaurus in Dinosaur King ranks as a good tier dinosaur design by the standards of Dinosaur King. Though if I'm going to be honest, if given the chance, I'd put it in top tier because for me, I only believe in one god. And the fourth dinosaur is Parasaurolophus, and judging by the looks of it, those who voted for Parasaurolophus in a poll I put up might be onto something. The version shown in Dinosaur King is what's known as Parasaurolophus Walkeri, and in this series, it's named Paris by main character Zoe Drake. As Dinop pointed out, the crest is a little too straight and should have a more rounded end. The tail might be a little too long, though it looks alright to me, except for that it should be raised a little higher when compared to Prehistoric Kingdom and Prehistoric Planet. The back and neck should also be more fleshed out. And finally, the coloration, which I didn't really want to bring up because you'll want me to bring up the coloration of other dinosaurs in the series then. Yeah, I know they're designed to be bright and colourful because it's a kid's show, but if Parasaurolophus was anything like the design in Prehistoric Kingdom, females, like Paris, would have been duller colours. This is speculation, but you do have some evidence for it in the form of modern dinosaurs, where females will be these dull, ugly sort of colours that aren't that fun to look at. Meanwhile, males will have brighter colours or these elaborate ornaments in order to impress females. The best example I can think of being the peacock. Anyway, I won't count this as an inaccuracy since it is a fair bit speculative, I just thought it would be something you guys might find interesting. When it comes to positives, most media portrays Parasaurolophus as having a kangaroo type posture, but really it didn't have this. Yes, it could stand on its hind legs and walk like that, but it wouldn't look like kangaroos. Anyway, besides these criticisms, I'd say Parasaurolophus is the most accurate out of the dinosaurs so far, and I'm going to give it a top tier placement. So I guess everyone who voted for Paris was onto something here. Personally, I thought Ace would be number one, so that was surprising. This can't be real. This can't be real. Oh, okay, it's real. Number five on this list is Spinosaurus who is called Spiny throughout the series, and is another dinosaur used by the Alpha Gang. And sadly for Spinosaurus fans, I don't think I need to do any research to show exactly how outdated Spiny is by 2022 standards, considering how much I've watched about it beforehand. So Spiny is an easy, aged-like, milk-tiered dinosaur. This design, like the others shown, was accurate for its time, however, unlike those other dinosaurs, most of this design is pretty much changed or altered in some way nowadays. Admittedly, that is an exaggeration, but you get where I'm going with that. First off, the legs are too long and should be shorter, and second, the tail should be long and fish-like, and the fingers, like the ones on Tyrannosaurus, are the same length. In reality, one was large and had this big meat hook like claw, like with other Spinosaurids such as Baryonyx and Suchomimus, whilst the others were much smaller. Not just that, but the head seems too big and shouldn't be as wide as what's shown. You might be quick to point out that the sail shape is different to our current understanding. However, as Red Raptor Wrights pointed out, that is some speculation. We don't really have any good Spinosaurus remains to show the layout of these. So at first we went with this Dimetrodon style sail, and now we have this dip. Not just that, but from what I remember from watching a video by Edge, if I remember correctly, it seems like what we do have is completely different from one another, so some have made the argument they represent different species. However, the remains are too fragmentary, so they could be the same animal despite some differences, or they could be separate subspecies, or two completely different species entirely. One thing I love is of how they have Spinosaurus in the water element, which I guess kind of shows off or alludes to that whole thing of Spinosaurus being semi-aquatic. Yes, I know about this paper. In terms of positives, the teeth seem to be correct. The teeth of Spinosaurus weren't serrated, they are smooth and conical and straight, being designed more so for gripping aquatic prey items than terrestrial. 
If there are any other positives for Spinosaurus, I'll save those for more water-centered episodes, they'll come around later if I make this a series. Next up we have Cychania, a small ankylosaurid dinosaur used by the Alpha Gang and is given the name Tank. There's not really much wrong with the design, but one inaccuracy is that the spines are far too big and pointy, when they would have been blunter and smaller. Yes, they would have been somewhat sharp when going for paleo art, but they wouldn't be these things that look like they're as sharp as surgical tools. And the second flaw is that Tank is a tad bit oversized for a Cychania. The club also should be flattened, but besides that, I'd say this is fairly accurate. The only problems I have besides those criticisms that Dynop already pointed out is that I have the feeling it might not be able to throw out its arms like this, and the tail might be too flexible. Overall, I'm giving it a great tier position. Now, that's the six main dinosaurs in the series out of the way, and now we're on to the two wild dinosaurs that first appear, that being Saltosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus. Saltosaurus is a titanosaur, so it's on the smaller side at about 7 metric tons and 12 meters. As a comparison, some of the largest members of this group, such as Argentinosaurus, have been estimated at approaching lengths of 25 to 35 meters, and as little as 60 to as large as 100 metric tons when going off of extreme estimates. Again, those are the extreme estimates, and from what I know, it's believed that Argentinosaurus is closer to 70 or 80 metric tons, but that's still a lot more than Saltosaurus. Overall, I'd say the design is fairly great, having a long tail and neck, but there are obvious flaws. According to the Dinopedia fandom website, there are two types of armor plates that are shown on Saltosaurus. One is much larger and spiky, whilst the others are more rounded and pentagon-like. Though I will admit, the website says these more rounded ones were at most 7mm, which isn't going to be noticeable on a 12 meter long animal, though it could be that the writers messed up and meant centimeters. And on top of that, one piece of paleo art I came across shows Saltosaurus with a row of ridges down its back, though I'm not sure if this is a flaw or not in Dinosaur King's design, since a couple sources I came across stated they found this for Diplotokids, but Saltosaurus is a Titanosaur, not a Diplotokid. Overall, since I can't really find much wrong, I'll put Saltosaurus in top tier for now. With Carcharodontosaurus, I don't know why, but there's something bugging me about the head. When compared to this image of a Carcharodontosaurus skull, and this piece of paleo art I really like, I'd say that the skull might be too short, alongside that the arms are too long, but I also feel like there's something else wrong with the design. Again, I'm trying to ignore shrink wrapping, pronated wrists, missing lips and other stuff, but I feel like there's something else wrong. I reckon it might be a little too bulky, but then that means this piece of paleo art I referenced earlier must be morbidly obese. In terms of positives, even though the arms are too big, they are larger than Tyrannosaurus's arms, which was the case, and besides the length, the head's pretty much the right shape, and by the looks of it, has the right teeth. With the teeth, they were designed to be these flat, serrated things designed to cause their prey to bleed out, unlike with Tyrannosaurus, which was designed to just crush bone, so I like of how it does seem to have the right teeth. I also like how they didn't give it those spikes down its back like with Carnotaurus and Tyrannosaurus, and just left it alone. Anyway, I think I'll put it in great tier for now. So this is what the lineup looks like for these 8 dinosaurs, though I have the feeling I should drop all the dinosaurs in the two top tiers down a tier. I'll let you guys decide for yourselves whether or not I should drop them or not. And this is the end of part 1 of this review for the first 5 episodes of Dinosaur King. The next part will be out soon, where I review some scenes in the episodes themselves. I thought it'd be best to split this into two parts, since it is a fair bit to cover. Anyway, see you then.
actually one other thing I do just want to note real quick, a bit unscripted here, is that uh, I was also thinking of branching out and covering other media involving dinosaurs or centered around dinosaurs. I was also thinking with um, the upcoming release of new product, I might cover the uh, dino bots from Transformers and go over the dinosaurs they're based on, though I don't really know uh, how, how much of it would be me actually talking about the dino bots in comparison to me talking about the dinosaurs they're based on. So would it be me actually making a video centered around them or me just randomly um, just rambling about uh, random dinosaurs. So anyway, see ya. Oh, that's hot. That's hot.